Our customer needs a different number of parts every time they make this order, and the stock is solid walnut. So we need to fit as many chair legs as we can on this, but it changes every time. How do you set that up in Fusion and not waste hours changing the setup? So let me show you how I do it. Let's measure our material and jump into Fusion. So here are the two parts that we need to make. There's a left and a right leg, and we often need to fit that onto stock that doesn't quite fit equal amounts. Say there's two of one leg, three of another, or we need to remake some amount of legs. Natural material is fussy like that. So how do we do that? Well, we definitely rely heavily on parameters. We've got some math here. Don't get too concerned about that. Really what we're looking at here is how many of each leg do we want in our setup? And we do that by just using typical old patterns in the end of our timeline here. So we've got this modeled in. We use the quantity for number of left red and spacing. And so those come from parameters we've defined in the parameters field here. So number left red and the spacing is the same. So we've got that kind of all defined here. That doesn't change. The same thing goes for the blue leg. So we can choose how many we want of each size. And then we can draw out the stock here, but I typically just make the stock in the setup. This is the setup we need. In manufacturing, we've got what looks like a pretty complicated setup. And truth be told, these are not simple parts. They are pretty tricky to make. They are tapered in a 3D sense, but then also they're just kind of hard to keep in place while you machine them. So we've got a decent amount of operations. And I don't start out with the perfect setup here. We're constantly improving every time we do these kind of things. We want to edit the setup and adjust that to be appropriate for so like you don't really need to adjust any of these things unless it really changes you do need to choose the new bodies and that's not going to dynamically update unless you had them inside of a, some kind of component where they then patterned inside of if that makes sense you'd have like a, a nested component so if you selected that as like a container rob lockwood container method right then you wouldn't have to select this every time what we do change then and this could also be a parameter is the stock size I just usually come in here, update the size of the material, but realistically, I'm updating the quantity and the size of the stock, regenerating, checking my simulation, and posting it. The first thing is we're driving a slot. So we want to clear out this material in the center kind of quickly and get a, a slot through all of those. So that happens back in our design. We have sketches. So if you turn on the sketches over in the manufacturing side, this line is defined, go back to the design here. If I open up this sketch, it's defined by the same parameters. I have each of these legs patterning. So like the blue goes north on the screen and the red goes south. And so that way we can always start with one. Typically we have at least one of each. And then depending on how many there are, we've got a clear distance red, which is a parameter that I've set up to be able to calculate what's this clearing line? And if we go back to our manufacturing, that's what is selected as the clearing line. So anytime it gets updated in the design, it will update here as well and you just regenerate. We're using patterns as much as possible. If you haven't used a pattern before, go up to setup and then new pattern, or you can select a bunch of stuff and then right click and add to new pattern. And the patterns then are a bunch of different options. In this case, we've got linear pattern, which is what we're using, and then spacing or extent. So we can get into all those details, but these are also now driven by parameters. If I look at the expression, I don't know why this doesn't show up like this. It should say the text there, but it doesn't for some reason. The expression is that same parameter I use in the design space. So number of left red, and then this is the spacing, negative spacing. So it's saying start here, move this way, and I have a, that sketch segment selected. If I hide all this crap. So it's that sketch right there. And then typically it's gonna say keep original. And in this case, we're ordering by the operation instead of by tool, but tool is usually the most efficient. So that's what's happening here. I'm doing kind of a pre-rough because this joint likes to blow out. And then we're doing some adaptives to clear out the end of those legs because when we get our ball mill down to the bottom, it's really deep and they like to catch there. So we do a little roughing defined by the sketch. And then we also then clear out the slot with an adaptive. The same thing happens with blue. 
almost all these same same things happen because this is just a mirrored leg. You could probably get even more creative with your patterning to do mirroring as well, but I like to have two separate legs. It's just a little more clear for me. We have three blue legs, does the same things there, except for instead we're using the blue parameters instead of the red. So number of right blue, the sketch is going kind of north, everything else is the same. So you're always gonna see blue and then red, blue and then red, and everything underneath each of those patterns should be the same. We use the steep and shallow operation, which is part of the manufacturing extension. You wouldn't need to, it's just simpler. So steep and shallow basically combines a couple of these finishing operations in one. So it's it's got parallel, it's got scallop, and then it kind of chooses based on how you define the threshold angles. And it's honestly just kind of got some magic sauce in it that is why we love it. I've also created a, an extra surface here that's allowing it to extend off of that edge and not just stop right at the end because of how our machine works and it makes a smoother surface because the turn happens off of the cut surface instead of on it because you get a little bit of vibration when it turns at the end. So those are pretty simple. That same thing happens for all of the red and the blue and those patterns are the same exact thing. They're using the same sketch, the same parameters and we just kind of march down each of those things, my typical desire is to always do anything you can positionally or the most delicate or most important features first. And so that would be cutting out this joint right here and then starting to work on the 3D surfaces, then rough the outside of each of the parts and then do a finishing pass on anywhere else you need to. And in this case, we don't have to do anything on a backside. So there's only a one side setup. Same thing roughing in this case. We're roughing on the outside of the part, a two flute upcut Vortex 1460, and we're leaving some stock to leave. If you're not familiar with that idea, it is a bit of material left radially and axially, so stepped off and stepped up so that we don't cut straight to the edge of the part because we want to do that with a finishing tool. That's a different tool. Also leaving some stock at the bottom. So we have what's called onion skin. Sometimes you would call that like a hat if you were doing that in traditional machining on like a mill. That's the same idea. In this case, it lets us use vacuum work holding really effectively because we never break our seal at the bottom here. So we've roughed in blue, we've roughed in red, and I'm just making a lot of patterns here. There are other ways to do this, but this is what makes a really replicable process. I know it's going to work every time and I don't have to go and select a bunch of stuff. Typically, at this point, all I have to do is change the parameters in the design workspace of how many of each leg I want, come back here, generate. So it's gonna tell me I've ge generated all this stuff already, but that's fine. So we've regenerated now. You can see some of the stock and process here and how the patterns work. If we get down here to the bottom, we then do a flat and facing kind of all the finishing operations to finish up for the blue. So the flat is machining off these flat surfaces. And again, think about this as we're only defining the middle two here and then the others are patterned automatically. So a pattern is really great, just in a general sense, if you're trying to make a product or something that you want to be exactly the same every time, take out all the human error you can out of it. So don't have different selections on each of these parts and have to sit here and reselect them if I need a different amount next time. I'm only selecting one piece and then everything that happens after that will be exactly the same because of the pattern. It, it never changes as it marches along. It's only moving in X, Y, and Z away from where you tell it to go. So same thing in red, blue then red, blue then red. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty nifty way of going about machining. It may not be the most efficient way, but it definitely is the fastest way to set it up and to get cutting again when you need to change it the next time. We just keep reusing the setup and that makes it easy the next time we need to go cut these again because we don't need to completely start from scratch again because we're making the same parts for the same customer. We just need to change the quantity. And while that's tricky sometimes, it doesn't have to be. I mean, this took a few tries for me to get it right and to feel comfortable about it. Anyway, I hope that was helpful and I hope it made sense. If it doesn't, ask me some questions in the comments and I'm happy to help.